Welcome back. Now we will learn about the classes of distributions. Remember, we learnt about probability distribution. In this chapter now we have a generalized view of distributions and what are the factors that lead to them. In analyze phase, once we identify the sources of variation using multivariate analysis, we must cross-check the conclusions with the help of hypothesis testing. As discussed in previous chapters also, normality plays an important role in deciding what type of statistical tests we can perform. Let us understand those characteristics of any data set, which affect the normality, those are, skewness, kurtosis, granularity, and multimodes. Skewness describes the asymmetry of data set about the mean. If both the tail ends are at same distance from the center, it is a normal distribution. Mean for such symmetrical distributions has same value as median and mode. While if the mean is less than median and median is less than mode, the data set is negatively skewed. And the left tail will be longer than the right tail. In contrast to negatively skewed data, the positively skewed data has the mode value less than the median, and median value less than the mean. In such situation, the right tail of the data distribution is longer. Data can be skewed either due to natural reasons or due to artificial reasons. Artificial data can get skewed due to mixed data, nonlinear relationship between y and x, interaction effects or due to over time, say because of tool wear. Let us see them one by one. First reason behind skewness can be mixed data. Remember in MSA, we saw that there could be various source of variation in measurements. As measurements for the samples of the same data set are coming from various operators and devices, we can get a mixed set of data where various distributions are hidden. And, this may lead to distortion in the distribution. Second reason can be the nonlinear relationship. When relationship between two variables is not linear and the slope is not constant, we can say that the data is skewed and not normal. This mostly occur when there is very less or no relationship between x and y. Third is due to interaction effects. Interaction effect is visible when two independent variables interact with each other to have a different impact on y than they would have individually. Another reason behind the skewness of the data can be changes happening over a period of time. Some of the characteristics change over time due to change in conditions. For example, tool wear over time may cause a different thickness of the metal sheet, and this may lead to skewed data. Skewness coefficient is zero for symmetric distributions, negative for left skewed and positive for right skewed. The larger the magnitude of the coefficient, stronger is the case that the data is asymmetric. The ideal scenario to analyze skewness is that it should be used in unimodal data sets, with at least 100 samples. This analysis can also be done in Excel itself with the help of Data Analysis Tool Pack. In Sigma Excel, we can create a histogram and see if the distribution is skewed on any side. Here this histogram is almost normal. If we see the descriptive statistics summary, the skewness coefficient is near zero, data is slightly positively skewed. Positively skewed means the distribution is skewed to the right. Another characteristic about the distribution is peakedness of the data. Kurtosis is the measure of peakedness of the data set. It is also viewed as a measure of heaviness of the tails. It should be used in unimodal data sets, with at least 100 samples. The kurtosis coefficient, gamma, for normal distribution is 3, and the shape of the distribution is mesocardic. If it is less than 3, it is less peaked and shape is called as platocratic. When the coefficient is more than 3, the shape of the distribution is more peaked, and called as leptocratic. One of the factors that impacts normality is granularity or levels of measurement, sometimes referred to as discrimination. Dot plot can easily help finding the granularity in data. We should also take precautions while observing the distribution. At times data is symmetric due to lesser measurement system resolution, like in this example the data points are on 1, 2, 
3 and so on values as depicted on the x-axis. The dot plot may look like a normal distribution due to symmetry, but then we need to check the granularity as well as test for normality. The data may be attribute data, then also it has granularity. When a data is normally distributed, it has only one mode. As we know, mode is the most frequent data point in a data set. We can find a multimodal distribution just by plotting a histogram. Multimodes can arise due to mixed data, patterns and data or due to failures occurring in the process. So, by now we know, what are the characteristics which define a data set to be normal or non-normal. In any statistical analysis, it is very important to find out if the data is normally distributed or not. There are many tests which have an assumption that data is normal. If we do not check the normality up front, the tests won't give us reliable results. Let us see what are the steps to check for the normality of the data. First, we do outlier analysis. Outlier is any data point that is numerically distant from the rest of the data. Outliers tend to draw the mean values towards them and make data look skewed. The outlier may be present due to some fault in the data itself or due to some special cause. We will learn more about special causes later in the training. If data needs correction, we do that, else we include the outlier in the data and perform the normality test. Along with finding normality, we also identify the outliers with the help of various ways. Common graphical techniques include box plot, histogram, run chart and normal probability plot. We have already covered about normality and normality tests in the measure phase. Non-normality of the data has following impacts. In all cases, non-normality affects the probability of making a wrong decision, whether it be rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true, called as type 1 error, or accepting the null hypothesis when it is false, the type 2 error. The p-value or the probability of making a type 1 error, associated with most statistical tools, is underestimated when the assumption of normality is violated. In other words, the true p-value is somewhat larger than the reported p-value. So we have to find out and assess the data if it is non-normal. The following may be the reasons for non-normal data. 1. When granularity is present in the data. So we have to ensure that we have gathered at least data points, especially with lower resolution as well. 2. A good representative sample has not been obtained and only a short term or subset is being analyzed that does not represent the entire process. 3. Outliers may skew the data. So we should determine if outliers have assignable cause or special cause and should they be removed. 4. Ensure the data is not bimodal or multimodal. Varying inputs affecting the measurements during the data collection process should be minimized or eliminated. The measurement system should be robust and not induce variation in the data. Lastly, if the data has a tendency to approach zero or some limit, then it will likely be skewed in that direction and thus will not be normal. We can make a non-normal data into normal data with the help of transformation. Though this topic will be covered later in the training. This unit covered the concepts related to patterns of variation. We have understood by now, multivariate analysis, how does it help in next sifting? We also learned about the classes of distribution and what is the significance of a normal data. The next unit in Analyze Phase is on the inferential statistics. We'll get introduced to the basics of inferential statistics. Here we come to an end to this lesson. Should you need any support, feel free to contact us. Thanks for watching this video, and see you in the next lesson.